And what's up guys, and this is Danny today reviewing the Pantech Discover. And I know we always talk about flagship devices out there, but not everybody has $200 or $300 to put down for a phone. And I think Pantech knew that there is an emerging market for this. And they wanted to give people the experience of a flagship phone with the budget price. So for a $50 on contract phone, they're giving you a lot of features for the price. You're getting a 4.7 inch 720p display. You're getting dual speakers, a 12.6 megapixel camera, 4G LTE connectivity, and a lot more. On the left side, you will see the volume rocker up and down switch. And on the right side, you will just see one of the dual speakers. And on the bottom, you will see a micro USB port. And on the top, you see the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with the power button. And you can see all around, this is an interesting looking device. The plastic build of this phone has an advantage though, and it has a removable back and it exposes the battery and the micro SD card slot. And that is just sliding away in the Android industry today. I am glad Pantech offered it because it has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. But overall, it feels pretty good in the hand. It's a little creaky though. I felt that the build quality had a little bit of creak to it. And the power on and off button up top sometimes is not as responsive as you want it to be. And it's just not as tactile as I want it to be. But besides that, the build quality is passable. And we'll talk more about this 4.7 inch HD screen later. But the biggest thing here, let's talk about call quality for if it's not a good phone, then it's just not worth anything. And I thought the call quality was passable on this phone and it features 4G LTE on the AT&T network. The data speeds were good and the reception was excellent. But what I did notice is the actual speaker piece. It's loud, but it kind of got gurgly a little bit in certain areas and the speaker phone actually for dual speakers weren't as loud as I expected. The same with media too. I thought that these speakers were going to be much louder, but they weren't. But yes, the call quality is passable, but I've heard clearer speakers before on other phones. So I just wanted to let you know, but it'll definitely pass for a decent call quality phone. So let's talk about some software. And it is running Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. And that is an old build of Android. Two builds back, actually, as of the making of this video. And that's the only thing that's disappointing because actually it runs pretty snappy. It features a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon Plus processor with 1 gigabyte of RAM. This thing has the same internals as a Samsung Galaxy S3, but with less RAM and the same internals as an Atrix HD. So... It does perform pretty quick here. You can see it doesn't have any problems keeping up at all, even with the heavy customization. And even in Ice Cream Sandwich here, you get the pull-down toggles here, which I like, which keeps up with the latest manufacturers that are out there, and it features a lot of things. Like the Pantech Easy Experience, which can change your icon settings to make the phone a little bit easier for the first time user and that's good because there's a lot of emerging first time smartphone buyers out there like your grandma or parents or something like that and they do have a lot of customizations on here as well to change your dialer color and even your screen lock and I thought this screen lock was interesting it is definitely different than anything I've seen outside of a maybe a custom launcher that you can just go right to your phone, your messages, smart voice camera, whatever you want to unlock it to, like your phone, it'll take you straight there. So I really like that. I think it's easier for some people to pick up. And it also has a lot of motion recognition. Samsung's not the only one that has motion recognition. And this phone was released back in January. And it has these swipe motion gestures here. That's pretty cool, right? And this was released in January, way before the Galaxy S4 was announced with this wow feature of the Galaxy S4. So I think that's pretty cool. And you got something to show off if you were to buy this phone. So it's pretty familiar Android experience. And there are a lot of widgets too. And there are some Pantech widgets. And it's pretty easy to navigate here. Easy to add a widget if you want to. Just kind of drag it in there. And I thought that the experience was pretty fluid all throughout. So even with a dual core processor, it's doing well. And 
I really liked it. But there's a lot of bloatware on here from AT&T and Pantech as well. So think about that. So web browsing was a pleasure on the 720p display. It does have some hiccups here and there in Chrome or the actual browser that comes with it, the Pantech browser. And it does support Adobe Flash for people that need it. And it can kick up a little bit, but for the most part, it performs pretty well. Now, this screen, when you look at it head-on, looks really good and crisp. But if you're looking at it from viewing angles, it doesn't have the best viewing angles on this 720p display. But let's talk about the 12.6 megapixel camera here. And that's a huge sensor, right? And it really should perform well. And it's kind of a huge step for a device of this price to have almost a 13 megapixel camera. The camera software is pretty basic, it's pretty easy to use as well, and it's got some cool features where you can say cheese or say now or okay and it'll take a picture and some other features here and there with some filters. But the video, the 1080p video, it's passable. I don't think it's the best 1080p video that I've seen. It's got some exposure issues as you can see. It's not gradual at all. The white balance is kind of thrown off and it just doesn't do with light adjustment, doesn't do well with light adjustment at all. And you can see that the colors are kind of blown out and it's just overexposed. And you can see that the color replication is also not that great. Now when the lighting is different, it might pick up a little bit better. But as you can see here, it just doesn't do well. Even when you focus it, it just blows out exposure. So, I mean, if you're really looking for a really good camera, then it won't be it. And you would think with a 13 megapixel sensor it would do better, but the video is just mediocre. But it all depends on which lighting situation because in certain situations the video can look pretty sharp and the frame rates are pretty good. But when you're in the bright light situations it tends to overexpose. But I think the stills do a little bit better, but not by much. It still has color replication issues and overexposure issues. And yes, you can kind of tweak them manually but I just wanted to shoot this in auto because for most people will and here with the flash it tends to be pretty weak. So here are some other photos that were taken in good light. So what about gaming for people that want to game on this phone? And it does have the older Adreno 225 graphics in here, but it does perform pretty well. From what I've seen, there are some games that might bog it down a little bit because some of these newer games just really need the processing power of these new chips out there. But for the most part, i found that gaming is pretty good on here with smooth frame rates and the speakers perform decently. I wish it was a little bit louder. But with the screen being nice, it is a pretty good gaming experience. So let's look at a more graphically intensive game like Nova 3. And I'm just going to let this play so you can see what the gameplay is like. You can see that the frame rates aren't the smoothest compared to the flagship devices out there. But it's definitely playable. So I'm just going to let this play and you can look at the gameplay footage. So the gaming is pretty passable, not bad. But what about the battery on this phone? And even though it has a removable battery and you can get an extra battery anytime you want to, just with the stock battery I was not able to get through a full day. I was probably running about 8 hours or so on heavy use. And if you dim your screen a little bit, you can get it there. 
but I thought the battery life could have been a little bit better. But hey, it's got a removable battery, so you can just carry an extra one on you, and you're good. So what do I think about the Pantec Discover? I think it's a right direction in these smartphones right now, because not everybody needs a flagship. Not everybody needs that. They just need a smartphone that works well and that's cheap and the people that are budget minded need something like this where it has a big bright screen, dual core processor, decent camera and a removable battery with expandable storage. So I think this is a good choice. But does this make this better than maybe a Samsung Galaxy S3 that you can find free on contract? Probably not because this is, thing is running Android 4.0 and there is no word if this thing's going to get updated at all. So the software experience is kind of behind, but most people probably don't know that are first buying a smartphone what Android OS there is. But it's pretty important because if they're not getting the support, then it's not worth buying the phone. So I hope Pantech steps up and really starts updating these phones. But overall, I think the device was pretty solid but desperately needs an update. So if you're gonna buy a phone for budget, then consider the Pantech Discover, but also look at things like the Samsung Galaxy S3 and some of the other flagships that are about a year old for they hold the same specs and you need to know what you're getting into before you buy it. So please follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific and subscribe to my channel for there are a lot more tech videos for you to enjoy. And please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you in the next one.